Greetings from America and welcome back to Nostalgia Channel. In recent days, we've been saddened by the news of the loss of some truly exceptional talents. Today's episode is a tribute to honoring their remarkable legacies. Furthermore, we'll take a moment to remember the stars who have left us recently. Before we delve in, we humbly ask for your support. If this video or the memories of these extraordinary individuals have touched your life, please consider giving it a thumbs up as a gesture of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Annie Bell, a beloved French actress and devoted social worker, has passed away at the age of 67. Renowned for her innate acting talent, Bell embarked on her cinematic journey in 1974, swiftly rising to prominence in both French and Italian cinema. Her collaboration with director Jean Rollin marked the beginning of a illustrious career, characterized by her willingness to tackle challenging roles that pushed the boundaries of traditional cinema. Born into a family of engineers in Paris, Bell chose a non-traditional path by pursuing acting. She honed her craft at the prestigious Rue Blanche Acting School under the tutelage of Master Velo, before making her mark in the film industry. Her early performances, including notable roles in Rollin's Toulon Ilan and El Dong B's productions, showcased her talent and versatility. Belle's career flourished further in Italy, where she became a sought-after actress in the exploitation cinema scene of the 1970s. Films like Forever Emmanuel, Bluebell, and Voluto Nero not only demonstrated her acting prowess, but also highlighted her skills behind the camera, earning her a co-writing credit on Bluebell. Despite her professional success, Bell faced personal challenges that eventually led her to retire from acting in 1989 after her final film, Fuga de la Morte. She returned to France and pursued a degree in psychology, dedicating herself to helping individuals with mental illnesses as a social worker. Annie Bell's life exemplified resilience and a dedication to making a difference, both in the entertainment industry and within her community. She will be remembered not only for her contributions to film, but also for her unwavering commitment to improving the lives of others through her work as a social worker. Annie Bell's legacy will endure as a testament to her profound impact on the arts and society as a whole. Rico Wade, the influential producer and founding member of Organized Noise, passed away at the age of 52 on April 13th. As a central figure in the Dungeon family, Wade's creative brilliance left an indelible mark on the Southern rap landscape and beyond, influencing genres and artists across the music spectrum. Born and raised in Atlanta, Wade's career soared in the early 1990s when he, along with fellow organized noise members Sleepy Brown and Ray Murray, began shaping the sound that would define a generation. His work on seminal albums like Outkast's Southern Playalistica Dillock Music and Goody Mob's Soul Food introduced a vibrant Southern sound that blended funk, soul, and a deeply poetic approach to rap. Wade wasn't just a producer, he was a visionary who recognized the potential of the Atlanta music scene before it became a global powerhouse. His influence extended beyond his own productions. His mentorship helped launch the careers of artists like Future and Killer Mike, showcasing his dedication to nurturing new talent. Tracks like TLC's Waterfalls and hits such as Inoj's Don't Let Go showcased Wade's versatility and ability to cross genres earning him acclaim in the wider music industry. His loss is deeply felt not only by his family and friends, but also by the multitude of artists, producers, and fans whose lives he touched. Rico Wade's legacy is a tapestry of groundbreaking music and the countless artists he inspired. His contributions to music will continue to influence and resonate, ensuring that his innovative spirit lives on. As Atlanta Mayor Andre Dickens noted, Rico Wade's impact on music and culture is profound and enduring, 
leaving the South and indeed the world with much to say about his remarkable life and career. Eleanor Coppola, a pioneering documentary film director and revered figure in the world of cinema, passed away on April 12th at the age of 87. Her profound impact on the film industry, characterized by her insightful documentaries and her integral role in a film-macking dynasty, leaves behind a lasting legacy. Born on May 4, 1936 in Los Angeles, California, Eleanor began her artistic journey at UCLA before meeting Francis Ford Coppola on the set of his directorial debut. Their partnership extended beyond their personal life into professional realms, most notably through Eleanor's groundbreaking documentary work. Her most acclaimed film, Hearts of Darkness, A Filmmaker's Apocalypse, revealed the arduous process behind the making of Apocalypse Now, showcasing her unique ability to capture the profound struggles of filmmaking. Eleanor's career was not confined to documentaries. She made her feature film directorial debut with Paris Can Wait at the age of 80, proving that her artistic vitality and passion for storytelling were undiminished by time. Her works, both in film and her written memoirs, provide a candid look into the personal and professional trials faced by the Coppola family, offering invaluable insights into the complexities of both her life and the broader film industry. Her contributions extended beyond the screen. She was a supportive figure in the lives of her children and grandchildren, nurturing their careers and personal growth as a loving mother and grandmother. Her legacy is reflected in the achievements and endeavors of her family, who continue to profoundly influence the arts. Eleanor Coppola's death marks the end of a remarkable era in filmmaking, but her legacy will endure through her films, books, and the continued work of the Coppola family. Her life's work enriched the cinematic world and provided a template for documentary filmmaking that will inspire generations to come. Larry Collins, a trailblazer of rockabilly guitar and one half of the dynamic sibling duo, the Collins Kids, passed away from natural causes at the age of 79. Born in Tulsa, Oklahoma on October 4, 1944, Collins rose to prominence in the 1950s alongside his sister, Lori, captivating audiences with their energetic performances and pioneering guitar techniques. As part of the Collins Kids, Larry dazzled fans with his rapid playing and infectious stage presence, contributing to hits like Hop, Skip and Jump, Beetle Bug Bop, and Hoy Hoy. They became staples on shows like Town Hall Party and even graced the Grand Ole Opry stage, embodying the spirited essence of rockabilly music. Larry's partnership with his mentor, Joe Maffis, further highlighted his exceptional talent particularly through their collaborative album Fire on the Strings in 1957. After the Collins Kids disbanded in 1961, Larry continued to make his mark in the music industry as a solo artist and gifted songwriter. His legacy includes co-writing enduring hits like Delta Dawn and the beloved country ballad You're the Reason God Made Oklahoma, showcasing his versatility and depth as a musician. Known for his characteristic double-neck Mosrit guitar, he inspired a generation of guitarists with his technical prowess and innovative approach to music. The revival concerts he performed with Laurie in the 1990s not only rekindled the joy of their early performances, but also cemented their status as rockabilly icons. Larry Collins's contribution to music and his legacy as a groundbreaking artist will continue to resonate through the chords and melodies of rock and country music. While his passing marks the end of an era, the rhythm of his music will continue to inspire and entertain. Robert McNeil, the esteemed Canadian-American journalist who revolutionized television news, 
passed away at the age of 93 on April 12th from natural causes at New York Presbyterian Hospital in Manhattan. Born on January 19, 1931 in Montreal, McNeil's illustrious career was defined by his insightful reporting and innovative approach to broadcast journalism. McNeil's journey into journalism began after his education at Dalhousie University and Carleton University, leading him to notable positions at ITV, Reuters, and NBC News. However, it was his coverage of the assassination of President John F. Kennedy that initially thrust him into the national spotlight, showcasing his ability to navigate one of America's most tumultuous moments. Perhaps his most enduring legacy was his partnership with Jim Lehrer, with whom he co-created the McNeil Lehrer Report in 1975, later evolving into the PBS NewsHour. This program set a new standard for evening news programming distinguished by its comprehensive analysis of current events and respectful discourse. McNeil's tenure on the show was marked by a deep commitment to factual, unbiased reporting, significantly shaping public broadcasting. In addition to his news career, McNeil was a fervent advocate for the arts and education, serving as the chairman of the McDowell Colonies Board and contributing to cultural discourse through projects like the acclaimed series, The Story of English. His influence extended beyond journalism into popular culture, with appearances on platforms ranging from Sesame Street to PBS's critical analyses of global events. Remembered by friends and family as Robin McNeil, he leaves behind a legacy of journalistic integrity and intellectual curiosity. His contributions have indelibly shaped both the media landscape and public perception, cementing him as a pivotal figure in the narrative of American media. Georgina Hale, a venerable icon of British film, television, and stage, passed away at the age of 80. Born in Ilford, Essex, Hale emerged from a challenging childhood to captivate audiences with her nuanced performances and remarkable versatility. Her illustrious career was ignited by her roles in Ken Russell's films, notably as Alma Mahler in the acclaimed Mahler, which earned her a BAFTA award for Most Promising Newcomer. This role highlighted her ability to portray complex characters with depth and emotion, a trait that became her hallmark throughout her career. Hale's stage presence was equally formidable. Her performances in productions like Steaming at the Comedy Theatre in London brought her critical acclaim and an Olivier Award nomination, cementing her reputation as a powerful theatrical force. Her role in Morning Becomes Electra, opposite Glenda Jackson in Glasgow, showcased her range and commitment to challenging substantive roles. On television, Hale was a familiar face, contributing memorable performances in series from The Strauss Family to popular shows like Doctor Who and Hollyoaks. Her ability to adapt to diverse roles made her a beloved figure on both the small screen and the big screen. Georgina Hale's legacy in the entertainment industry is indelible. She brought gravity and grace to her roles, influencing generations of performers. Her contributions to cinema and theater continue to resonate, celebrating the spirit of a truly remarkable artist. Joe Madison, affectionately known as the Black Eagle, passed away from prostate cancer at his residence in Washington, D.C. at the age of 74. He was a distinguished radio talk show host and relentless activist. Madison's voice resonated on Sirius XM Urban View, where he engaged audiences with insightful discussions and an unwavering commitment to justice. Born in Dayton, Ohio, Madison's academic journey took him to Washington University in St. Louis, which honored him with an honorary doctorate in 2019. His radio career began in 1980 in Detroit, where he quickly rose to prominence for his ability to address complex issues of race and society, appealing to a multiracial audience. Madison's impact extended far beyond the airwaves. 
He was deeply involved in political activism, notably participating in a hunger strike in 1996 to push for the declassification of documents potentially revealing CIA complicity in drug trafficking. In 2015, he set a Guinness World Record by hosting a marathon broadcast, lasting 52 hours, aiming to raise awareness and support for his causes. His personal life was as rich and impactful as his professional endeavors. Madison took a DNA test that traced his ancestry to Sierra Leone and Mossy, adding depth to his vibrant heritage. His family included poignant connections to pivotal moments in American history, including the Tuskegee syphilis experiment involving his biological grandfather. Joe Madison leaves behind a legacy of advocacy, education, and change. His tireless work and the profound conversations he sparked have left an indelible mark on the hearts and minds of many. As we mourn his passing, we also celebrate his remarkable life and the countless lives he touched. Joe Madison was not just a voice on the radio, he was a beacon of light for social justice, and his legacy will undoubtedly endure. As we conclude this tribute, let us hold the memories and legacy of these outstanding individuals in our hearts. Their contributions to the world and beyond will continue to inspire generations to come. We once again thank you for joining us on the Nostalgia Channel, and we look forward to sharing many more beautiful memories with you in the future. Until next time, goodbye, and may their spirit live on in our hearts.